الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الصلاة والسلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله Our beloved master صلى الله تعالى عليه وآلہ وسلم has stated Recite durood upon me in abundance because your recitation of durood upon me is a means of purification for you صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم The viewers of Madri channel A sahabi came to the court of our beloved Prophet صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم And told our beloved Prophet صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم That Ya Rasool Allah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم I am hungry He wanted to say that During the last couple of days I did not eat anything Our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala sallam when asked his blessed household is there anything available to feed that guest? So he was told that there is nothing available to feed that guest. Then our beloved master sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam made announcement among the sahabas that if there is any sahabi who can take that guest for that night and feed him. So one sahabi from the Ansar, he presented himself in the court of beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and said that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will take this sahabi as a guest for tonight to my home. So that sahabi went with that other sahabi who was host. Now the host sahabi went to his wife and told her that today I came with a guest from the court of our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and he is hungry. Whatever is available, please present in front of him. So the wife of that sahabi told him that food is not enough even for our children. So how can we feed and entertain that guest? So that sahabi told her that okay, you make the children sleep and then present the food in front of us. And then he told her that when we sit for eating and when we are about to start, you come, you just come in order to set the lamp and then put it out so that in darkness the guest would be eating and I would just, I would just be moving my hands to show him that I am also eating with him. So in the same way, when meal was served, that wife of that sahabi came and she pretended that she is going to set the lamp right but then she put it out and in this way in darkness only that guest was eating and the host was just sitting there without eating anything. At that occasion Allah Rabbul Izzat revealed a verse of Quran in which he says وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا that they prefer others over themselves. The viewers of Madri channel, it is also one quality of the Muslim that they care for others more than themselves. They prefer the needs of others to their needs and in every move and in every action they want to seek the pleasure of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The viewers of Madri channel, inshallah azza wa today our discussion is going to be about the etiquettes of host and guest. So let's go to Mufti Sahib and ask him the first question of today. You know, I want to start with the relationship between host and guest. So my question is, 
that what is the excellence or fazilat of hosting other Muslims? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hospitality is very good quality and very beautiful quality of every Muslim. And it's the sunnah of all the prophets. Particularly in the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned regarding Hadrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. There is a whole parable regarding Hadrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and angels. Angels were the guests of Hadrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was the host of those angels. So Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, Hal ataka hadithu boyfi Ibrahim al mukarami is the khalu alayhi faqalu salama qala salamun qawmun munkarun so that these are the ayat in which allah azza wa jalla has mentioned that hos, uh, hospitality of hazrat ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam that honorable guests means angels visited hazrat ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and they said salam faqalu salama qala salam then hazrat ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam responded them with the word salam then ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam went to his home and he brought beef, roasted beef, and he presented that in front of other, in, in front of those guests, those guests which were angels. But because angels are free from eating and drinking and these kind of traits, so then they mentioned we are angels and we have been sent to the nation of Hadrat Lut alayhi salatu wasalam to punish the nation of Hadrat Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah Azawajal mentioned particularly Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam as a host because that was the very that was very special quality of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. It has been mentioned in books that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was fond of the uh, fond of being hospitable for other people till the extent that he didn't eat until any guest eat any guest eat with him. That was the habit of Hadrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And even it was the habit of many Sahaba Ikram as well. That's why there were some Sahaba Ikram who were used to eating only with their guests. If guest, if guest was not available, they didn't eat. Then Allah Azza wa Jal sent one ayah of the Holy Quran: "Laisa alaykum junahun anta akulu jamian aw ashtata." If you eat along with other people, there is no harm for you. And if you eat alone without any guest, that is allowed for you as well. There is no harm for you. So this, the cause of revelation of this ayah is mentioned in book because there were some Sahaba Ikram who didn't eat until they, until they, any guest came to them and they ate only with that guest. So then Allah Azawajal revealed that ayah. And entertaining guest is the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as in your introduction you have mentioned that story when one guest came to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there was nothing at the houses of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to his sahaba gram to entertain that guest so then the whole story went on so it shows that being hospitable for other people was the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is one tradition and custom among Muslim, particularly in Arab people. Arab people were very famous and popular in their hospitality. That's why they sometimes they they show their pride in their hospitality. That uh, uh, at my home. There were uh, there were guests more than more than your guests, and the other people was claiming that my guests were more than your guests. So that was tradition among Arab people. And there is one hadith in which the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned the excellence of being hospitable, and he put emphasis upon that. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yomil akhiri fal yukrim daifahu." Whosoever has belief in Allah and in the day of judgment, he must give honor to his guest. Mean he behaves, he should behave him in the best way. Whatever he can do for his best for his guest, he should do that. So that is one tradition and that is one narration of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When we study the biographies of Aliyah Kiram and the and the pious people, so that one that one quality must have been mentioned in, in, in the biography of that personality as if we study the biography of Ghosipak or other awliya kiram. 
particularly Aulia Kiram were famous and they are famous because of their hospitality. As the Langar, the, the common feast is available for every person even after their departure from this world. That's why at the on the name of Kosipak Radiallah Ta'ala, no? on the name of Data Sabra so the, uh, the Langar is going on, the people go to their domes and they eat there. Why? Because that were that was the tradition of those Aulia Kiram. And they were very hospitable in their lives. So Allah Azzawajal continued that fast and that blessings of those Aulia Kiram after their departure from this world as well. I think most of you made mention of the competition among the Arab people that I have fed so and so people at my home and other one is saying that I have fed even more than you. So this competition, then Sahaba's generosity, meaning uh, they were fond of feeding others, organizing the feasts for others. So my question is that today we see that people, they avoid, you know, hosting others. They, I mean, it, it's very hard for them. Maybe it is because of stinginess or uh, anything else. There might be some uh, appropriate reason and might be yeah. improper reasons. Okay. For example, one of the reason is stinginess, really. The stinginess is the reason for not entertaining the guest. If some, if any guest comes to someone, so it doesn't feel good. So really, that is one of, that is one of the reasons. And that reason is really uh, very wrong and uh, that is not good reason. And the other reason is, uh, nowadays, the people don't care other people. They are busy in their own lives. They wanna, they wanna restrict themselves into their own lives. Their whole life is revolving around their wife and their children only. Even they are away from their parents, as in many countries that is very common and people know that. So because of these kind of uh, mentality and minds of people, now people don't like to entertain their guests, and they don't like that any guest come, come any guest comes to their house. So if that is mentality and that is mindset and because of that they don't like to be hospitable for other people, so really that is wrong. But there might be some uh, valid reasons as well. For example, a person is very poor, so because of his poverty he can't entertain his guest, he can't provide his services or his food properly to the status of his guest, so that's why he doesn't like that and he avoids. So if that is the reason, so that might be one excuse. But I think for these kind of people, they should like being hospitable, though because of some other reasons, they can't afford that and they can't bear the burden of any guest. And there might be other reasons as well, as nowadays the people are very busy, the reason of their business is valid or not. Some people are busy in their important uh, engagements and some people are busy in wrong things. So because of, because they are very busy nowadays, so they don't have time sometimes even to their children. How can they give time to their guests? So because of their engagement, they don't like the arrival of any guest. If that is the reason, so it depends upon the nature of the work of that person. For example, if that person is a religious person, he's a research scholar, for example, and he remains busy in his jobs. If he has to do, uh, entertain his guests, so he would he would get disturbed because of him. That's why he doesn't like that. So if that's the reason, so I think at some extent it would be valid. But on other extent it is not valid because that is the quality of a Muslim and it has been emphasized upon in Hadith. So that's why everyone should have that quality. That is uh, the second reason. The third reason, I think that might be valid in some way. What is that reason? because of the misbehavior of guests or because of the bad manners of guests. People doesn't like guests as if someone entertains guests. So he, he makes his best effort to provide his services, to provide the best food to his guests. But the guests, they are arrogant and they, they don't get satisfied, they don't get pleased with their, their host. So when they show that kind of behavior again and again, so then what could be the outcome? So the the these uh, so these kind of guests would be disliked by by every by every host. So that might be reason. And so I think there are some valid reason and there are some 
in very reasonable their views of badin chand mufti sahab raised a very valid point and that is that sometimes arrival of a guest is not liked just because of one reason that when he comes at home from the very first moment he start criticizing the host and the family of the host the the, the children of the guest they, they come and they mess around you know they turn everything upside down so in this way their arrival is not appreciated they become unwanted guests so please if you are one of them be careful because in this way your presence will not be will not be liked and people will avoid you uh, acha mukta you made mention of uh, you know langar meaning an open feast for everyone anyone can come and eat and go uh, without any meaning without charging anything so data sahab langar huzur gose pak langar which is still continue from his day till today in the name of garmi sharif mashallah and then many other awliya ikram they started langar so uh, i know the meaning the sawab and the reward but i want to know here that what are the benefits especially meaning uh, conducting your langar or organizing or arranging langar in those parts of the world where muslims are not in majority and you want to do dawa work so what is the significance of langar feeding others or uh, feeding others in order to spread the message of islam there are many excellences of feeding for people because that is the responsibility of every human being to feed those people who are deprived of and who are deprived of food so that's why it is very important and uh, in quran in ahadith so if we collect only those ayat and ahadith so really those would be more than many hundreds as in the holy quran allah azza wa jalla has mentioned uh, the the qualities and the attributes of those people who are fearful uh, of allah azza wa jalla and who has who have fear in their hearts from the hell fire so allah azza wa jalla mentioned their qualities in this aya wa yut'imuna ta'ama ala hubbihi miskinan wa yatima wa asira they provide food to those people who are deprived people who are deprived what what are those miskinan destitute person yatiman orphan and uh, and asiran prisoner so because these are the people who are mostly uh, who are mostly needy people poor people and deprived of food people so allah azza particularly mention these people otherwise if the if the early words of the aya have been mentioned those, those would be enough wa yutimuna ta'ama ala hubbi they provide food to people but allah azza wajalla mention those people who who are really deprived people and mentioning those names can can uh, can encourage people to feed them so then allah azza wajalla mention these qualities and allah azza wajalla warn those people who don't provide food to needy people and to poor people and to destitute people as allah azza wajalla mentioned araita alladhi yukadhibu biddin fadhalika alladhi yad'u al-yatim wa la yahuddu ala ta'am al-miskin so allah azza wajalla mentioned the attributes of those people who are non believers and who belay the day of judgment allah azza wajalla mentioned though first first Uh, uh, their mischief allah subhanahu wa mention ara aitallazi yukadhibu biddin they don't believe in the day of judgment then allah subhanahu wa mention fa zalika alladhi yad'u al-yatim so that person who doesn't care anything about orphan wala yahuddu ala ta'am al-miskin feeding orphans feeding poor people uh, from our own self that is another thing but allah azza wa jal criticizing those people who don't who don't encourage other people to feed these orphans and these poor people and these destitute people so that is the that is the importance of feeding for a needy people that is a desirable responsibility of every muslim even every human being to feed these kind of people and when we feed someone when we feed someone so really we draw his attention towards us and then if we have to convey the message of islam to poor people so that is one of the best way that is one of the best way to convey the message of islam to them through providing them food and through that i i uh, we have observed 
the people of the other religions so they converted people from islam to their religion or from other religion to their own religion through this way so that is the way and in the beginning of islam when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam started preaching islam in the beginning rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam arranged one feast for his relatives after after providing food then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam conveyed the message of allah azza wajalla to to them and similarly in many other places rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was fond of feeding these poor people to the extent there is one hadith in in bukhari sharif once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in masjid so some needy and destitute people came to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were too much poor they didn't have even one grain to eat so they visited the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at them the the color of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam changed because of observing their condition then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made one khutbah and he he gave one sermon to sahaba e kiram uh, for for helping these people so then one person then one person came to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with some food when he when he, he when he placed that food in front of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam became happy then other sahaba e kiram started bringing their food to the court of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam until those people who were totally deprived of food and dresses so they got a lot of food and dresses then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that time adalu ala al khairi ka faidi the person who invites other people or who guides other people towards good so he is like that person who is doing that good thing means the first person the first person who brought his food to these people all the other people who followed this person this person will get the reward of those people as well and after observing the condition of those people rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam got very worried about them and when those people provide when those people were provided food and dresses then face of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very happy and happiness was appearing on the face of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that's why being worried and being conscious regarding poor people regarding needy people is the sunnah of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the ruler of arab area but in spite of that the sallallahu sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't collect any money and didn't collect any kind of wealth at his home why so that he could become example for poor people that in which way the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spent his life so that they they must not be discouraged that we are deprived people and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is enjoying wealth and and the luxuries of the life so that's why though the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the honor of the blessings of allah azza wa jalla and if he if he had intend for the mountains of makkah and madina to turn to turn into gold they they would have been but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't intend that so that he spent his life he, he spent his life in that way and he would become the example of our poor people mr mustafa you just made mention of that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam cared a lot about uh, the poor people needy people uh, here i don't want to ask you that what are the social benefits meaning if you are very polite and kind with with poor people what i have observed that everyone who is beloved to allah special people of allah anbiya awliya so they love poor people more than rich people they care for poor people and needy people and destitute more for other people they want to sit with them they want to go and come with them so they want to spend life with them so my question is that what is the reason that they are so much attentive so much careful about these people they don't want to break their heart they want don't want to tease them is this act of them is going to earn them special pleasure of allah azza wa jalla in this way they will be able to get closeness to allah azza wa jal more than any other action basically these kind of people who are poor because of their poverty they are very sensitive broken heart people they are very sensitive okay if they are teased by someone if they are harmed by someone so they 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 feel the pain of that teasing more than the more than rich people 
so that's why allah azza wa jalla commanded to be careful about these people even there is one verse in the holy quran and the cause of the revelation of that ayah is uh, the rich people of makkah so they requested to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we wanna come to your court but because around you there are poor people and their dresses uh, uh, their dresses smell so we can't sit along with them so that's why please keep please, please make them away from you then we will sit in your court and we will listen to you so they requested that and there was one kind of benefit in that as well because if those rich people and the sovereign of mecca if they sit in if they sat in the court of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they listen to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so they might have accepted islam before rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made any intention allah azza wa jalla revealed one ayah and in that ayah allah azza wa jalla commanded holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to sit with these four people what is the what is, what are the words of those ayah allah azza wa jalla said واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشية. You 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 keep yourself with those people who call Allah Azza wa Jal day and night. And what are those people? Those those people were poor people. One of them was Salman Farsi. One of them was Abu Zar Ghifari. One of them was uh, Ammar bin Yasir. These kind of Sahaba Kiram were those. So. Allah Azza wa Jalla particularly ordered Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to stay with them. And another ayah in which Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Wala tatrudi ladina yadruna Rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashish." You must not keep them away from you who call their Lord day and night, who worship their Lord day and night. Turidu zina tal hayat al dunya because of uh, looking at the. Uh, world uh, at the worldly wealth because of that you must not do, do that so when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was commanded to stay with these poor people who are believers and who have believe in allah azza wa jal so it mean they have some they have certain excellence in the court of allah azza wa jal and they have some certain importance in the court of allah azza wa jal and then the uh, then the whole world uh, saw those were the people who spreaded islam and who preached islam and who conveyed the message of allah azza wa jalla to other people otherwise mostly rich people what do they do mostly they re- they remain sitting at their homes and they just issue their commands and they just issue their uh, verdicts uh, so uh, this uh, this scholar should do that this scholar should do that but the poor people they go to uh, they go to every home they go to every street they go to other people they convey the message properly as even in the environment of islamic we can observe that do alhamdulillah in our environment the, the rich people are the, the rich people work they also work at, at in the uh, in the companion of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well sayyidina usmani ghani radhiyallahu anhu was sayyidina uh, abdul rahman bin auf radhiyallahu anhu was there so he was one of them and he was rich but mashallah they were the preacher of islam and they spread islam in very beautiful way so mashallah those people did work but mostly we observe the poor people the poor people do the work of islam they do the service of islam and the rich people sometimes they don't do that work and sometimes they remain sitting at their home and they just issue their commands and because they don't have the experience of work themselves so that's why uh their commands mostly are not beneficial like the experience of poor people so poor people are beloved to allah azza wa jalla when they are patient because that is another very important thing otherwise there is no particular excellence for being poor poor people who are patient so because they get the reward of patience so they become the close slaves and the bondmen of allah azza wa jalla and they get the closeness of allah azza wa jalla as allah azza wa jalla mentioned in the holy quran inna allah ma'a as-sabirin indeed allah azza wa jalla with those who are patient so who is patient mostly poor people are patient though the difficulties come in the life of rich people as well but mostly poor people they face difficulties and hardships in their lives and they show their patience and their patience shows their trust in allah azza wa jalla and their satisfaction with the will of allah azza wa jalla so because of that they get the closeness of allah azza wa jalla subhanallah the viewers of madri channel if you are poor please don't lose your heart 
because but I have read in Ahadith of Barakah that on the day of judgment poor people will be sent to Jannah 500 years before the rich people rich people still be standing that hadith in Tirmidhi Sharif ji. that hadith in Tirmidhi Sharif ji, ji. so rich people still be standing in the court of Allah Azzawajal and they will be facing accountability but poor people will be sent into Jannah 500 years before them and believe me poor people will forget the hardships and the difficulties which they faced in this life. Some Muhaddisin uh, very beautifully explained this hadith the, the, the poor people will be entered into paradise 500 years before rich people. Ji. Though the rich people paid zakah, they performed hajj and they spend in the path of Allah Azzawajal. Though they have done these worships Ji. and they spend their wealth in proper way and in, in, uh, in lawful way. But in spite of that, they will be they they will be late 500 years. Why? Those commentators mention because though they have spent their their wealth in the path of Allah, but they have to be accountable regarding that wealth as well. Yes. If they have paid zakah, for example, so because they have paid zakah, so now there would be many question regarding their zakah. Have you paid your zakat completely? If your zakah uh, would be, for example, uh, 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 1 million rupees, so have you paid that completely? And uh, to whom you paid that? And from where you earn that wealth? So there are many questions regard, uh, about his wealth, about earning, uh, about his earning wealth, about his spending wealth, and uh, the, the people to whom he paid that zakah then he didn't remind of his favors to those people. So there are many questions regarding him. If he performed Hajj, so did you learn the commandments of Hajj as well? And after that, did you follow those commandments of Hajj? Because there are many Farai, there are many Wajibah, there are many Sunan in Hajj. So did you follow all the commandments of Hajj, whether those are Farz or Wajibah Sunnah? So about each and every Sunnah and Farz and Wajib of Hajj, that person would be asked. So that's why he would be busy, he would be busy in answering these questions which would revolve around his wealth. So that's why he would be delayed in, in entering paradise. So that's why they will go to paradise after 500 years Jee. of Jee. Uh, poor people. Uh, there is another hadith which Jee. is coming to my mind Jee. and really that hadith is heart, uh, heart shaking hadith. In that hadith, one person would be presented in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal will say to him, Oh my bondman, I was sick. Why didn't you visit me? Allah, Allah. I was, I was hungry. Why didn't you feed me? I was thirsty. Why didn't you give me water? Allah. That person would say, Ya Allah, you are our Lord. You are the Lord of the entire universe. So, how can you become sick and thirsty and, uh, and, and hungry? It is impossible. Then Allah Azza wa will tell him that my, my so and so born man was sick. If you, visit, if you visited him, you would find me there. Allah, Allah. If and my so and so born man was hungry, if you fed him, you would find me there. So that is the excellence of these deprived and destitute people and that their status in the court of Allah Azza wa Allah Azza wa mentioned this is in a in metaphorical way Ji. but the, the words what Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that time so we can, we can, we can know Ji. and we can consider the importance of these people. So coming back to the topic host and guest. So what are the rights of guest over host? The basic rule of entertaining guests in mention in one hadith, as I mentioned, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yu'min akhiri fal yukrim daifahu. Whosoever has belief in Allah and in the day of judgment, he should give honor to his guest. Now in this word, fal yukrim daifahu, whatever is considered as giving respect and honor to guest, that must be done, that should be done and that would be the right of guest. So now in the light of this hadith, we can think about actions which are considered in our 
or in our society as honor giving actions as uh, if someone if someone invites other people to his home so now when that person will come he would be guest first of all i would say if someone invites other person to come to his house so if there is any confusion in invitation he should remove that and he should confirm that person that mm -hmm. really i have invited you and you have been invited to my home as i have observed some places some people said to someone uh, uh, i am about to invite you at my home at that day for example on friday now that person is waiting for his next invitation and he can't do he can't do any other engagement that day he can't appoint any other engagement that day so he is waiting for this inviter and this inviter is forgotten so just he made he confused that person he made him confused now that person is is waiting for him and this person is busy in his own jobs so first of all when we invite someone so we should confirm his invitation that you have been invited at my home on that day so yeah. that that person must not be confused and, uh, and must not be confused the second thing when any person comes to the house of any person so the host the host he should welcome him warmly he shouldn't show any kind of unhappiness and and disliking that kind of that kind there should be any mark of that kind of unhappiness and uh, and uh, or angerness or disliking because that is entirely disrespecting to guest allah and it happens many times Ji, happens. sometimes guest comes and the host shows his disliking to him Ji. openly Ji. and then the guest feels totally disrespect and disgrace for him the the third thing when guest comes to the home so that time host should be very polite to his family and his servants as well that is another thing because sometimes when guest is at home and the host is shouting upon his family upon his children upon his servants so the the guest will feel this person is displeased with my arrival and because of that he is shouting and he is Uh, screaming and he is abusing his children and that would be considered as disrespecting to guest so that is very important thing then as far as the matter of providing food to him so if guest comes only for a while as sometime guest come just for one hour just for two hour so according to tradition of that society he should provide him uh, he should serve him with uh, with tea or coffee oh, or with whatever is the tradition of that uh, that nation or that society but if guest comes for a few days because it is not necessary that guest comes only for a for a while for a uh, for a few minutes or for a few hours as it has been become a tradition in some societies they in those societies guest can come only for one hour for two hours he can't stay at the home at the house of his host for one day for two days and they consider that as very bad very bad thing that which kind of guest he is he is staying at our home for one day for two days even though he is their if he is their relative so if he stays for a few days so then the sunna is this that particularly on first day this host should arrange some special food for him he should he should provide some special food to him that is called jaiza in arabic the second day he should provide him whatever is available but there should be some more thing should be added in that so that he consider that i am being entertained by this person the third day so then whatever is, is available so he can entertain with that he can serve with that and three days for three days the guest is guest after three days now the guest should go back and he shouldn't stay more so that the household people they should be disturbed mm -hmm. by that person and that is that has been commanded in one hadith that after 3 days the guest must mm -hmm. leave the house of a uh, 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 house mm -hmm. of host because after that this mm -hmm. person will disturb those people and the viewers of madhi channel uh, if i summarize so mufti sahab uh, said that when guest comes and arrives your at your home you must not show your your displeasure that you are not pleased with his arrival and you dislike him 
but instead of it you should show your happiness you should receive him very warmly welcome him with open heart so that he can he can realize that really he has some sort of importance and then see i mean guest is mercy of allah azza wa jal when the guest comes he comes with lot of mercies so arrival of a guest is not a burden it is going to prove beneficial for you not only in this world in terms of lot of risk will also come to you but in hereafter as well that because of entertaining that guest on the day of judgment you will qualify for special rewards and mercies from the court of allah azza wa jalla acha musab some people meaning they show their disliking when guest arrives so it is evident from their face that they don't like him so what is the commandment of sharia regarding those people who show their disliking at the arrival of of a guest Uh, it depends upon the reasons of yeah. disliking sometimes there is valid reason yeah. according to sharia there is valid reason or according to the tradition of society there is valid reason so if if the reason is valid according to sharia so then there is no harm uh, for host but if there is no any valid reason just because of his habit and just because of his stinginess or just yeah. because of his yeah. uh, yeah. invalid reason yeah. if he shows that kind of disliking so then Uh, that is not good and that is not the attribute of a muslim and that is uh, that person is really very away from the qualities of islam and from the beauties of islam because being being a uh, hospitable is the sunnah of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is the beauty of islam as well and when this person shows his disliking to that person so then he is giving up that commandment in which the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam particularly mentioned whosoever has believe in allah and in the day of judgment he should give honor to his guest mean that person who is showing his disliking to guest it means he is he is not fulfilling the demands of his belief in allah and in the day of judgment because particularly when holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned these these two words man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir it means being hospitable to guest is the quality of that person who believes in allah and in the day of judgment and when he doesn't do that it means he has lack of his iman in allah azza wa jal and in the day of judgment and he is weak iman person so that's why it, it must not be done because that is the beauty of islam and that is the beauty of every good person as well uh, if we look at those people who are worldly people but they are famous and they are considered polite and good people mm-hmm. and sociable people in in society so that is their trait to entertain their guest appropriately and they don't show that kind of disliking uh, to the people uh, the viewers of mabin channel mufti sahab told us that uh, to be hospitable for others to entertain others to be generous in entertaining the guest it is demand of our iman and allah forbid if out of stinginess or because of other unwell invalid shari reason we are not entertaining a guest properly although we are able to entertain him or we are showing our disliking so this is one of the signs of weaknesses of our iman may almighty allah azza wa jal make us a wonderful host and may almighty allah azza wa jal remove the stinginess from the hearts of the host so that they can entertain their guest in best way amin amin bijah nabi al amin sallu ala al habib sallallahu taala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is precious like gold because keys to success this knowledge does hold the knowledge of islam is precious like gold because keys to success this knowledge does hold